Well, for more now, let's cross to Strasbourg, where the European Parliament is meeting this week. MEP for the UK Conservatives, Sajad Karim, joins us. Thank you for speaking with us here on France 24. Good evening. It's my pleasure. Uh, we've just seen that there were um, cheers for Theresa May as she entered uh, that meeting uh, with Conservatives at, at Westminster. Your thoughts, how should she proceed going forth? Well, it's quite clear she uh, is doing the right thing in trying to get uh, the confidence of the backbench MPs, having, of course, secured uh, the loyalty of um, the cabinet members uh, and uh, having finalised that part of the process. So it's absolutely vital and key that the backbench MPs also now come into line and pledge their support to her, because without that pledge of support, I'm afraid she's not in a position to govern at all. But with that support, she has the chance to carry on from here. How, how soon will we know whether or not she has that support? Well, that meeting is uh, ongoing uh, at this moment in time as I'm speaking to you. Um, we will know um, very shortly thereafter. Uh, all of the indications are that members of parliament are very keen to ensure that a programme is put forward under an administration led by Theresa May at this stage. Uh, they do not believe that there is much appetite for a further general election at this stage. Uh, and quite clearly, those MPs do not want to uh, allow even the slightest of risk uh, that a further general election could indeed be won by Labour. So all of these will be factors that are very much concentrating on their mind as I speak to you now. She's still trying to hammer out a deal with uh, the Northern Irish uh, Unionist DUP party. Uh, is that a good idea to have a, a, an alliance with the DUP? Well, it certainly brings to life the phrase that politics makes for very strange bedfellows sometimes. Uh, and in the United Kingdom, actually, we don't have a, a culture of coalition governments. Uh, and so these processes are, are relatively new uh, for British people. We did, of course, have a coalition administration uh, between ourselves and the Liberal Democrats some years ago. But in parts of other parts of Europe where this is a normal part of the process, there is a much greater understanding of how these procedures work. In the United Kingdom, let's see quite what sort of agreement unfolds. It certainly won't be a coalition in the strict sense of the word, but it will be uh, an agreement on a, a, an as and when needs basis. But of course, there will be a price to pay for that loyalty from the DUP for them to deliver their votes as and when required. And what will that price be, most notably uh, when it comes to uh, Brexit negotiations now further complicated by the fact that London is one of the two arbiters of the Good Friday agreements along with, uh, the, along with uh, Dublin. Yeah. Well, at this stage, other parts of Europe where you are quite used to such coalition setups, the whole process can be very, very transparent, uh, even bringing in normal members to approve coalition agreements and uh, other party agreements that are put in place. In the United Kingdom, this process is being carried out uh, with only a very select handful of people actually aware of the details that are being hammered out between uh, Theresa May's administration, proposed administration, and the DUP. But of course, the Northern Irish situation is a particularly sensitive one, both in terms of a UK uh, setup, but also uh, within the uh, Brexit negotiations that are due to start, we hope at some stage fairly soon, and indeed in the European Union's own negotiating mandate, it, it is made abundantly clear that the Good Friday Agreement must be respected. Uh, voices of concern have been raised uh, as to whether the you... DUP coming into some form of agreement actually compromises the independence of the British government. Do you share those fears? Does it compromise uh, the, the UK government's uh, role as a neutral arbiter in those Good Friday agreements? 
Well, politically speaking, when the uh, last uh, general election took place, uh, not the last, but uh, one before, sorry, uh, and the Labour Party were quite keen under Gordon Brown to secure some sort of working majority, they themselves reached out to the DUP. So this is not something uh, which is politically new. However, having said that, there are issues within the mandate upon which the DUP fight elections that are of concern and there must not be any giving of space to the DUP so far as those issues are concerned. What, what are those issues? Well, I think uh, there's been quite a lot of talk about the DUP's attitude towards abortion uh, and indeed towards uh, equal rights, particularly when it comes to discrimination uh, on the basis of uh, homosexuality or sexual preferences. Now, these are issues which are actually within the remit of the Northern Irish Assembly. They are not part of the Westminster setup, so far as uh, Northern Ireland is concerned. Those are delegated matters for Northern Ireland. So, on the face of it, there is no reason as to why they should be a part of uh, any agreement that is formed at a Westminster level, uh, but many of us uh, still raise a voice of caution just to make sure that they aren't. And uh, this alliance being hammered out, if it is hammered out, Sajad Karim, does that increase or decrease the likelihood of a hard Brexit? Well, we are really in some very uncertain times uh, pr at present. Uh, and there is actually no telling where um, this will eventually arrive at. What we know at this moment in time is that the Conservative Party has fought its election uh, on a manifesto of delivering a certain type of Brexit, which could be coined a hard Brexit. Uh, and the Labour Party have fought an election saying that they wish to hammer out an agreement which provides access to the single market on a tariff-free basis without the freedom of movement of people. Now, that equally seems to be an unrealistic prospect. It's a very ambitious agenda that the Labour Party have set out. I don't see that being a form of agreement either. But we are very much not even at the beginning stages. It's only earlier today I saw that uh, my colleague David Davis conceded that the terms, of, uh, the terms under which the negotiations will take place uh, will now be those that have been dictated by the European Union. Uh, up until recently, it was being argued that they were open for negotiation. Now, clearly, there's an acceptance that what the EU says uh, is the process, will be the process. But let's get to that table and let's see what sort of progress can be made. But there are real dangers because there is no guaranteed parliamentary majority to get through. Uh, whatever the final outcome of these negotiations may be. So this really could end absolutely anywhere as I sit speaking to you at this moment in time. And of course, those negotiations were due to start next Monday. Sajad Karim, many thanks for joining us uh, from Strasbourg. My pleasure. My pleasure.